Welcome. Tonight, we're going over the board that does so much that we never want to hear about. Because whenever we hear about it, it's usually not great news, but we're lucky in Milford because our Board of Health keeps bringing us good news on new programs. And every time you talk about the Board of Health in most towns, it's not as good news. So let's start with introductions. Paul Mazzucchelli, the health officer. Ken Evans, health, uh, Board of Health member. Lenny is our Board of Health member. Now you're the junior member. I'm the junior member. You're the Correct. junior member. <laughs> and how many years? 30, 35 this year. 35 years straight and the junior member. The junior member. So well, Paul, this shows you how dedicated the, the sport is to the, giving the best quality we can to the citizens of the town of Milford. Yeah, what, what, what that, another good thing to add too, Al, is that uh, we do have a very experienced board of health, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a complacent board. Um, each year, I'm asked to set goals for the new chairman. The new chairman then and I, we, we meet and we come up with this at least 10, 10 goals a year. Some are uh, the same goals as we had the previous year, but raising them to the next level. And there's also some that we add some, some new ideas to. So again, it, it's something that we always want to challenge ourselves to do better, to never get complacent, but to raise the bar each year. Because like I said, public health is always changing and we know by the experience that you know, public health, we have to change with public health. Well, by definition, your standards should never be the same. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, every mm -hmm. year, you know, you start looking at everything from the housing that mm -hmm. you guys spearheaded. You know, and we're pretty proud of the fact that you guys have kept us ahead of the curve. And, you know, as examples to most of the other 300 cities and states mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, if not across the whole region. Right. You know, and that's something that we found out, you know, through um, telephone calls, through observations around town several years ago that, you know, nice neighborhoods were becoming blighted. Um, uh, homes been, you know, becoming overcrowded, not only through packing individuals into a particular home, but illegal conversions, adding to an attic or adding to a cellar, uh, which then increased the safety hazard or the, or the health risk. We also found at that time um, the uh, incidence of tuberculosis um, went from zero to uh, 12 in, in, in one year, you know, and that was just confirmed cases. So we don't know how many others were around there and, uh, or the exposure to a tuberculo uh, to someone with tuberculosis had an effect on, on what. So now you have overcrowding, and of course that's one of the ways that, that you know, you can contract. Well, any type of, of aerial um, toxin mm -hmm. or disease that spread, you know, through contact. Mm -hmm. When you start cramming 10, 11 people together, and you're just going to increase the incidence right. of exposure. And, and, and that's something that we use, you know, uh, not only through enforcement, but we also try the education and awareness factor. Let's get the education out there, you know, why we're doing this, um, what, it could, what would happen if we did not do this, and the awareness factor that there is something out there, you know, to be aware, and it's only to protect the general public as well. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the backlash came back that it's anti-immigrant, mm -hmm. and I laughed because, I mean, you know, Mazza, Kelly, and Gabrielle, you know, mm -hmm. you sit there and say, these are not people that don't understand right. immigration mm -hmm. to Milford. Right. You know, you look at your family, you look at mine, mm -hmm. you know, this is not like 14 generations back. Right. You know, we all understand that, you know, I'm the first one to say, I'm fortunate to be in Milford because somebody gave my grandfather Mm -hmm. a chance mm -hmm. to be a produ productive member of Milford. Right. So, you mm -hmm. know, I never, I never looked at it as anti-immigrant no. or anything on that line. Be right. Because when you really stratify it, when you really, break, when you really break it down into different compartments, it was more or less to protect the immigrant. I mean, they're the ones they're who, the were, most exposed. who were being exposed, who were being uh, put into cellars and attics and paying high rents because they had no other choice, so they were being taken advantage of. Well, you had no choice. If mm -hmm. you went against Italian immigrants, mm -hmm. Miss Cookie mm -hmm. would have your hide. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's but, for you know, sure. when I look at some of the findings, when you went into these homes, mm -hmm. and, you know, like my house is set up for one kitchen, and you look at where, except for air, the air conditioners, mm -hmm. the biggest load is in the kitchen. You try and make a kitchen out of a two, 
two circuit bedroom. Mm -hmm. And you know mm -hmm. the fire, I mean, anything yeah. along that line seems to be frightening. Right. You know, they were jamming them into the cellars, into the attics, underneath the dripping standpipes. We had one in Cherry Street. It was awful. I mean, yeah, and it's actually the fire department that on several occasions that has notified us yeah. of these violations. Well, I mean, you think about if you're a neighbor, if their house catches on fire, mm -hmm. through no fault of, I mean, the immigrants, mm -hmm. let's face it, they're doing the best right. they can. Mm -hmm. But if they've got a kitchen up in the attic or a kitchen in a bedroom, mm -hmm. and there's another bedroom with another kitchen, you're putting a lot of um, demand. Of course. That, 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 that particular structure was built, let's say, for a one or two family. It was plumbed for a one or two family. It was wired for a one or two family. You add two, one, two, three other units on that, you're overtaxing that. Yeah. You know, and you're slicing wires, it's, it's not inspected. Um, it, you're, 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 you're running the electrical system ragged. Of course, it's an accident waiting to happen. Plus, the first responders, when they, when they go there, you know, they look, they want to go to such and such address, they know it's a two-family house, they find out that the person they want to get is up in the attic or in the cellar. You know, mm -hmm. so that, that's also a, a problem. And look at the neighborhoods these houses are in. They're all cramped neighborhoods. So you have one house gets fire, it's going to skip to the next well, one. That's the next my point. One. If your yeah. neighbor's house catches, there's yeah. good chance mm -hmm. that you're going to have damage on your house. Right. Sure, right. absolutely. And just the inconvenience. I mean, um, even with our kids' cars, mm -hmm. now we're finally over that, but right. you had room for two, three, four cars, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you start putting six, eight cars, right. We had one occasion where the uh, landlord tried to bypass the gas meter, right. and uh, we tried to get the gas company to press charges, but they didn't want to get involved. No, but we, we had a, at the time, Kenny, I remember what you were talking about, you know, we had to actually condemn the house temporarily until everything was brought back in order. Tenants had to move out, you know, That's again. That's frightening. It is. You start playing with a gas meter, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you know, if you don't know what you're doing, we had a house on Jefferson Street where they jumped the electrical uh, meter. They took the meter out and they put spikes in there. Mm. You know, so like I said, we've seen it all when it came to that. Yeah. But mm. what brought it to light, again, was that regulation that we had yeah. to keep an eye on the overcrowding and illegal conversions. And it's working. And it wasn't because we were prejudiced about any particular group. It was that we're concerned about their safety and our safety as well. Well, I hope you are prejudiced towards Milford residents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if anything, mm -hmm. you should be very concerned well, yeah. that right. everything you do. And right. one of the things that we were uh, pretty uh, comfortable about, Al, was when, was it last year, the year before, when the casino movement came in and there was a possibility that we would have a casino. And one of the biggest concerns were we're going to get a lot more people coming to Milford to get to work at the, these the jobs. gypsies that... So yeah. right now, there, there was another... Um, temptation, for lack of a better word, for someone who owned multifamilies to say, okay, now we can really capitalize on this movement and, you know, we'll put some in the so cellar. So it becomes a six-family home. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Three-family became a six-family. With six 150 family. watts of power coming right. in. Right, so, but we already had something in place for that. So we were proactive instead of reacting to a situation. So now we look at things that you're doing for the town. Mm -hmm. One Potential of the hazmat. Absolutely. We had a hazardous waste day last year where we took 9,000 pounds of hazardous material out of the waste stream. Four and a half tons? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. they're, very, yes. they're very popular. And this program is financed through the receipts at the transfer station, which also brings us up to uh, other hazardous waste. We have uh, certain people in town that collect refrigerators, stoves, things like that, because metal now is, is bringing a good price. So at the last meeting, it was suggested that we should regulate these people because if they're picking up a, uh, refrigerator. a, a refrigerator, uh, air, conditioner. air conditioner, a freezer, they all contain hazardous waste. What are they doing with it? We should know. And right now, we don't. So there's people that go around and just Mm -hmm. Take your yes. yeah. Freon full air conditioner, and they take right. the pliers and they cut the line. They just the well, we don't just know. open the we line. The Freon goes away and makes nice holes in the ozone. Correct. Yeah, but we don't know what's been. That's the the whole point. We don't know what's happening with these items. That we got. So what we 
what, what we're proposing is that we should regulate them, have them maybe get permits or a license or something like that. And if they say, well, I don't pick up any of that stuff, okay, we want your name on the side of your truck and your phone number, and we'll put authorized to pick up only furniture, TVs, whatever. But we have to identify where the hazardous well, waste is. But then you also have the right the to stop by <clears throat> um, Mazzucchelli Waste mm -hmm. doesn't do refrigerators. Exactly. So you drive by, you stick your head in and say, what are those for? Right. If you don't collect them, mm -hmm. why are they there? Right. right. You should have a recovery system to take See, the free off. Well, but I mean, my, my point is, if I'm telling you I don't, but then you have the refrigerators. If we go by and we see there's no recovery system there, we can notify yeah. DEP that can be serious for ICE. You see, it's, it's, it's the modern day junk man. Yeah. What we were used to when we were kids. We saw the junk man going around. There were three or four maybe in town. Sure. Sure. And, and, the, and there, there are a few around now because there, are, there is some money in junk. You know, like Kenny was, and Lenny was mentioning, the uh, uh, appliances, the, the metals and whatnot. And that's what they would collect and they would take it to Framingham and they get some sort of per pound or whatever. Uh, but uh, they, they, there was a few incidents where a fella would take, pick up refrigerators and air conditioners and whatnot, and come to find out he would go up somewhere up in 140, I think, he was going up and just cutting the line, draining it all out, and then well, you just spike somewhere. it. Yeah. The Freon's Which, gonna be in a gaseous right. form. Yeah. Right, and that's, mm -hmm. and that's definitely a, 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 a... It's a concern. It's a concern, yeah. and that it's we definitely have. in violation. So we're trying, we're, we're, Hopefully, we're going to come up with regulations to control mm -hmm. this uh, permitting process and a, a way of determining. Well, it makes determining. sense because it's just like used oil. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I mean, where, where was it? I think it was in North Carolina in the 80s. They had somebody picking up the old uh, transformer oil, dirt cheap, to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And what they found is they filled up a big tanker and then drove around the backwoods of North Carolina, opened the yeah. spigot. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out some some camper was on the side of the road, wow. woke up being sprayed. Wow. And, you know, yeah. called yeah. emergency. You know, there he is covered in oil, and they mm -hmm. traced it. And it was all because nobody back then was regulating. Mm -hmm. right. But it's the same so, thing. If I go around yeah. collecting all the oil from the garage, and I'm going to dump it in the dirt, I can probably charge yeah. a lot less. Right, yeah. And you can't blame the people. homeowners yeah. because I'm sure some of these, I don't even know if they get charged them or not. They might even just pick them up for... For yes. nothing. I, I'm not sure what, what the structure is there for they pricing leave is. Right cap but uh, there's no way of us controlling it now, and this is what we attempt now, to do. Now, if I have a fridge, uh -huh. and I want to get rid of it, uh -huh. can I put it down the end of my driveway? Yep. Call the office, uh, notify us, we'll give you a pickup date, give you a sticker, you apply it. And, and something like a fridge would be a, a $20 fee. To have a so, I mean, to be legal is nothing. No. 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 20 bucks, mm -hmm. you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Al, a few weeks ago, metal was $200 a ton. So that's a lot of money. So you get these guys driving around picking up all this free metal. What's it costing them? Gas? Right. Who cares about the environment? I'm getting free cash in my pocket. And the place they bring them to, they don't care because mm. they're getting the metal. But you can't bring them. Well, I think most of those places won't accept it. If say, you can't bring a loaded been, fridge. Well, it has no. to be certified right. with a sticker. Yeah, right. but, yeah, but no matter what, you're not going to bring to a legitimate no. uh, redemption center right. a loaded fridge because mm. they, they, they got to deal it. with the free on. Yeah, right. they They're not going to take it. So yeah. this guy will cut the line. So, so he he'll spike it. it. Yeah. Now it's empty. Mm -hmm. Mm. And... The redemption center has no idea whether it's yeah. legitimately. Right. Usually, I think now too they ask for a uh, sticker, like a like a, oh, a, okay. a, a, a certification that it was done that legally paid by someone licensed, someone that that was licensed in the extraction of uh, Freon did it properly. So, what do people normally, you know, when you say potential, it's not really hazardous material. It's, it's almost it's hazardous material. It, it it is hazardous, but it's not in the waste stream, and that's what we're trying to prevent it from getting into it, the waste. It, it would, like Freon is hazardous. Um, like I said, it's considered a hazardous waste. It's considered a carcinogen. But what you know? would people, four and a half tons of what was delivered? Oh, you mean at the, tra at the, at the, at the hazardous waste day? That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, any, any, any household hazardous waste that you have, it could be fertilizer, it could be shoe, 
the regular uh, uh, furniture polishes, Shoe polish. uh, pesticides that you have lying around, um, turpentine, all paint thinner. Um, Oil-based paint. Oil-based oil -based paint, we take down transfer stations, so we don't cl have it collected oh, you, that day. Okay. You know, um, so like a, any, any, Clean it uh, like an old chemical, any solvents, that, like anyway. an old solvent that you had hanging around, uh, uh, grandpa passed on, so they're going to clean out the cellar. They find all chemicals that he had for God knows how long. And old Al, tires? Old tires that's we take on transfer yeah, stations. Well, we still take them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alan, don't forget, all this waste comes from the homeowner. No, uh, we don't. No, no commercial, commercial just all residential. And we're one of the only towns, Al, too, uh, that uh, does not charge their residents for this ha hazardous waste day. Uh, it, it is very expensive. Uh, we have it from 9 to 1. Yeah. In those four hours that we have, the past couple of years, we did 10,000 pounds the year before, 9,000 pounds uh, just last year. But it came to like um, uh, eight, seven, eight thousand dollars That the town paid. That yeah. we that paid through. To get rid of it. They get right. rid of yeah. And right. we have another hazardous waste day coming up next month. On the 7th the, of the, uh, the November. The 7th of November. At the t uh, behind the um, town, bar, the town uh, highway department from nine to one. I think it's a pretty good service for the mm -hmm. citizens. Sounds great. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. Now, the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting into the end of the year. Right. What are the hours of the transfer station? They're still, the t they don't change until uh, the beginning of January. Oh, okay. And then we cut back, uh, we cut out uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So right now, there it's Thursday from 10 to four, Friday and Saturday, eight to four, and on Sunday, 10 to 4. And Sunday's a very popular day. Well, that makes mm. sense because, I mean, when you go 10 to 4, if I'm employed, mm -hmm. that's kind of hard mm -hmm. during the week. Mm -hmm. But if you give me a Saturday and a Sunday, right. I mean, I would think Saturday's the day I've got to put everything in, mm -hmm. you know, and then Sunday I'll bring it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I still just got to buy a sticker, right? Right, yeah. yes. Same price that we've had for since years. We started. Since uh, we started. About 20 years, Lenny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Well, no, I find it amazing. Was it twenty bucks or something? Twenty yes. bucks for the year. Yeah. Twenty bucks is put it on the, it, the it, vehicle, and that and that will cover your motor oil, all your paints, and uh, yard waste. Yard waste and, gra grass and house leaves. junk, right? No, your house junk is charged per. Um, load. Well, I got to pay something. Yeah, but you got to pay something. But those ones I just named were were part oh, of that twenty dollars. Yeah, you know. So so those and we also include syringes now, uh, shops. Yeah. Sure. We have we have a shops program that we started this past year too. This and past that, spring. That's very successful. And it's huge. Now, very how successful. do I get a sharps box? Because that's always going to be the question. Really, you should get it from your own supplier or who your medical doctor or or the uh, um, pharmaceutical company or whoever. So maybe your own pharmacy. But we don't pass them out. But we have a disposal place for them. But now if. People don't get a sharps box. And okay. They just get a milk container and throw them in there. Any hard container. Okay. Uh, right. Detergent, a detergent container would yeah. be detergent container. better. Than something a that you can't, like a, a puncture proof that you can't. Yeah, something puncture. heavy duty. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. We but try to make it as convenient as possible. But I'm saying I don't need mm -hmm. to have the fancy red no, you sharps do not. box. No, you do not. No. no. But it should be. In, it has to be in a. a, a well, you're not going to bring it down in a baggie. No, no, no. Right. Sharps in a baggie kind of mm -hmm. defeat yeah. the purpose. <laughs> right. But I hadn't thought about that because everybody has laundry detergent. Right. Sure. And that's a great place. Right. Even mm -hmm. a, an old um, chlorine bleach uh, uh, bottle. Oh, even better. Yeah. You know. if you had Clorox bottle. Right. Because anything left over well, will, 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 act, will act as a yeah. disinfectant. Sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's uh, with that program started in April. And it's very successful now. I mean, people are actually calling us up to thank us because we were getting quite a few calls. We didn't realize how many people were actually using shops for some reason, either you know to test their blood or to actually. Well, you got fat old men who have mm -hmm. to, you know, do the insulin injection, the insulin injection. or yeah. prick your finger, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you got you're supposed to use these things once. Mm -hmm. So you're generating mm -hmm. anywhere from one or two mm -hmm. to four or five little sharpie things. Right. right. Yeah. You know, every day, and also you have people that have pets that sure. have um, and, and, and require and insulin shots. Mm -hmm. oh, I hadn't thought about diabetic doggies. Yeah, we got yeah. fifty of them last week. Fifty needles last week from a pet owner. Hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, it's a popular pro program, mm -hmm. and like I said, we, we we like to respond to the public's need. Sure. You know, and that was something that came up because right two or three years ago, you could put them in your rubbish. 
you know, providing the in a, a puncture proof container. You know, that. But isn't that frightening? I mean, it's I, frightening. That's I why put we can't do it anymore. a puncture proof container. Right. It goes to a landfill, mm -hmm. gets run over. Mm. Pew, yeah. The container yep. is not going to stand up to a bulldozer. Right. No, no. So then right. your sharps just. Right, all you know, all, few, all over. A few like years ago, I'm sorry. Yeah, a few right. years ago, the state uh, passed a mandate law saying that we have to stop throwing the shops mm -hmm. in the uh, waste stream because, uh, like you said, they go into the landfill somewhere or the trash hauler picks them up, they get punctured in the hand. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, you as a municipality have to take these in, find a way to fund it. Right, and it was it was it was an unfunded mandate oh, by the what state. What a surprise! I know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So these are the things that you know. Again, we we, we had to uh, um, uh, look at, and we we adjusted felt as though our This was the best it. way to go. Yeah. yeah. Now I heard a rumor that you and Paul went out on a five-week um, Italian cuisine course. <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 yeah. It, 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 probably it, not the the whole story. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't five weeks straight. You know, it was yes. like. It, it was, it was over a span of five weeks, maybe one or two days. Two days a week. A, a week that, that we had to go. We went to, to different areas. We went to Pe Peabody. Pe uh, we went to uh, Peabody one day, uh, uh, Lexington another day. Yeah, but what day. was the actual um, it, 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 goal it, of the course? It, it wasn't to it, it, teach it, you how to eat no, good no, food. No, no, it was a very intense course on food service inspections, more or less wanting us to gear toward the risk factor instead of the environmental factor. You know the time, the temperature, uh, you know the uh, um, uh, water content or the moisture content. Anything that's going to be conducive to microorganism growth is what would we'd be looking for and looking for a way to, to more or less um, bring down that risk. You know, it's like for two old guys to go to this thing and then how nerve-wracking it is to take mm. a test to make sure you pass it. Well, yeah, and it, it, it was also too. That's why I wasn't included. Yeah. I'm not one of these old guys. But well, we had to come back and tell Kenny all, all about it. But, but uh, now we have how many, if I say restaurants, I shouldn't say that, but food, food, service. Well, the, the food service places in Milford mm. that you have to inspect? It's, 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 it's uh, I would say, very close to 145, between because they open and close. You know, one, one, 145, 143. Uh, 140 different places mm -hmm. you have to inspect. Right. Twice a year. Twice a year. Twice a year on a minimum basis. Mm -hmm. Last year we did it four. We did we did each each place four times. It was a continuous work in progress. Mm -hmm. We kept going and going. And again, with that risk factor inspection in mind, of course, we still we're still going to cite the environmental factors like the infamous dirty walls and floor and mm -hmm. I see dust on the light fixtures and all that. That's also cited. But you know the main focus what what was on you know, potential risks that could affect uh, uh, something that will enhance bacterial growth, mm -hmm. including rodents coming into your building. Sure, you know, pests, pests are also on. included in that too. You know, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's what we did. In fact, we 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 not only rodents coming into my kitchen. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you leave the door open a crack if you don't have a maintenance contract with somebody, you can have a problem. Mm. I guess you can't have a health department cat. That you hire. It's a good idea, though. That's <laughs> a, we're going to find somebody to get one. It costs a lot of money to train it. <laughs> he has to go to that five week course. <laughs> he has to go to that week. <laughs> but now, seriously, you walk in, and obviously, you look for general cleanliness. Mm, sure. you, the, fir the first thing you should do to put people at ease, because we're there not for um, you know in enforcement, but to more or less, less this is we're all in this together. We want to work with the uh, uh, we want to with the partnership with the restaurants. And, um, you know, we introduce ourselves, let them know who we are. A lot of them do, do know who we are. Uh, tell them what we're here for and what we're going to be looking for. And we'd ask them if they have the time to accompany us. Yeah. So, in other words, as you write things down and, let's say, two days later, they want to attack what you, what you did and, you know, and start fixing things, they'll understand. Why? Because they were actually there. So you can explain certain things to them. At the end of your inspection, you go over all your, you know, what you found with them, and we have them sign the sheet. One of the things, too, that we look at as well is, 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 is the, the certifications on the wall mm -hmm. because there's also a state law that says you have to be at least one person, minimum. You've got to have one. Minimum of one person per shift has to be certified in food sanitation. Um, and uh, you have to display that certification. So that's another thing we look for. Plus the allergy awareness. Uh, allergy awareness is, is, is too. That's well, a I mean, big at one. the end you know, of the whole scenario, mm -hmm. Your families 
you know, your kids may go there to eat. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's like years ago, we made a decision that police should give out tickets for safety, not for revenue. And Tom O'Loughlin said, I give you a speeding ticket, I don't even see it. It goes in the general fund. Yeah. It's the same thing, I think, with the health board. We're not asking right. you to go there to generate fines for revenue. No, no, no. Because no. Right? Mm -hmm. you don't get any benefit no, from it. absolutely not. Like we tell them, no. we're there to help you. We're here to work with you. Mm -hmm. We're not here to bust your chops. We're here yeah, to make My sure daughter may come here for dinner. I want yeah. her to have a healthy meal. Yeah, yeah. My grandson might come in with me. I want to make sure he's safe and sound. Right. Yeah. So I walk in, I look at the walls, I expect them to be clean, not mm -hmm. sterile, but mm -hmm. clean. clean. Mm -hmm. Reasonably clean. Yeah. I mean, light fixtures, I would think, are the hardest things to keep clean. Yeah, light fixtures, and not only that, but you know, there's a um, physical uh, condition that would cause food poisoning, but uh, a, a food hazard, you know, uh, Lights uh, breaking, you know, without you know the proper sleeve covers. You have to have a shield over the you lights. Know, shield, you know, a lights oh, yeah, breaking can glass keep, shards can, can, falling can go into in. the yeah. food. Uh, very, you know, screws be, that are being loose. Uh, air vents. Wood, air yeah, vents. Wood, paint chipping. Uh, wood, wood chipping. You know, all that stuff too. Refrigerated you know. doors that have the gaskets. Make sure there's no uh, leakage in the gaskets. Because that moisture would also cause not only a decrease in or, or an increase in temperature, but also mold and mildew. Yeah. One of the other items that we uh, the department has begun is a newsletter mm. to all these food service establishments, picking out a certain topic each month and explaining why it's in place, what they can do to cooperate, what, and we give them help, helpful hints on, on certain items, what to do. And so that goes out once a month, right? It's a good, it's a good point, yes. Uh, we have, like that newsletter Kenny was talking about, we've been getting a lot of compliments on it. People calling us up in the industry, we, we send it out. We, what we t try to do too well is uh, to save money on postage and whatnot. When we renew their permits each year, send it to them. But, right, but they, no, but not only that, but they, we ask for their uh, e email, email now. So we try to do. I would say we have close to 90, 92 percent of those that you know gave us their email. So we just blast that right out to them. And again, like Kenny was mentioning, it's any new new change in law. One of the things that we do too is based on the inspections we have done in the past few months. These are the most common violations that we found throughout our town. So be please be aware of it. You know, be cognizant of so these. I'm going to take a test because your inspection is a test of yes, my it compliance. Is. Yeah, it, it absolutely. And you're right. giving me the questions mm -hmm. to the test mm -hmm. and the answers and the answers. and the answers because we want you to know them. Okay, mm -hmm. it doesn't <laughs> sound like we don't want to trap you. Well, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> you know, realistically, we don't wanna... the most yeah. frightening words are, "I'm from the government and I'm here to help you." Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm yeah. giving you the questions and the answers to mm -hmm. tomorrow's quiz. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like well. It's 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 like I said. It's a continuous work in progress. So it's just like having a continuous classroom. Be, now, out of 140, mm -hmm. how many of them have issues? Oh, I would say probably maybe a, a very low percentage. Uh, it varies. It, it, it varies, varies because uh, right. we have some some violations that are really minor. No, what I was going to say. Now, is it 10 percent have violations, and then what's the percentage what's that? You maybe, would say maybe, are serious. Maybe maybe five percent had had serious violations, what we, which we would call them those Very that nice. are considered high risk. Yeah. Okay, something that's going to be so. Out of the hundred and forty, you're really talking somewhere about ten. About ten that we have to watch, um, and, and again, a lot is based on the um, uh, degree of the establishment. In other words, are you serving um, the elderly? or the immunocompromised, you know, such as a nursing home, a hospital, or something like that. Um, even our own senior center. I mean, they, they have their, their lunch, hot lunches that they uh, serve there. You know, so uh, these are the things that we put into different categories. Uh, but uh, like I said, there, there, there are some that, again, that inspection too is only that point in time. What happened before, what happened after, yeah. you know, that's why we like to but get... Let's face it, if you find an issue, mm. and then you come back and the issue is still there. Mm -hmm. the you're going to get more attention. You're going to get yeah. more attention, and not only that, but I mean, if the if the risk factor is 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 high, uh, then we have to decide what we want to do because again, you know, we not only want to be a working partner with these people, but the public's health is is, is our ultimate importance. Yeah, and so, not only that, if they don't correct it, on the first time, and we would go back to make sure it was corrected. If it's not corrected, then we have to go back a third time. 
we make them pay for it. Good point. Yeah. Yes, that, that we, we also established the board established that that policy. So too you give well. me the questions and the answers. If I flunk the quiz the first time, you give me a second time. Mm -hmm. Right. And then if I have to take the same quiz the third time, yeah, I guess that's not too harsh to say. No, it's going to cost you. You're going to pay. I mean, let's 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 say we go into your establishment, and at that point in time, for some reason, you have no hot water. There is no second chance with that. You're, you're, you're closed, okay? Or we go in and we find out that your refrigeration is off, you know, and it's going to take hours and hours to get back into the proper temperature zone. There's no second chance for that. Well, they can't be. I mean, you, you figure you know, if I can't wash the right, plates. Right. Yeah, but mind the plates, by law, you have to have a hand washing sink in the kitchen just for hand washing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have hot water in that sink, like Paul said, we have a right, right to close you down. Right. You know, so yeah, but you have an obligation because if you're not washing the utensils and the mm -hmm. dish and cleaning the and sanitizing the hands that yeah. Yeah. they go out and do things and you know I remember the famous well, study of the uh, I never ate another beer or not you go to a bar oh yeah <laughs> and when they tested and they found 80 percent of the locations yeah. the beer nuts were contaminated with E. coli. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody's mm. not washing and their washing hands, hands after a certain function. How about these single-service gloves? They put them on, they use them, they're supposed to take them off after they get done using them. They leave it, they go to the cash register, they go to the counter, they well, go they here. Well, they think just because they have gloves that Just because they have gloves, they're safe. True. But that's not true. Mm. They got to change them all the time, and they don't. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major things that we find. Mm. Really? Although it's minor. So the disposable gloves, they're using it multiple places? Multiple places, because yes, they feel like that false sense of security. Yeah. You know, I have, I have gloves on, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't matter. You, you got to change them like you got to wash your hands. I washed my hands yesterday. Yeah, well, that doesn't help you today. <laughs> but I mean, you see it even in the labs when people walk out mm -hmm. into the offices yeah. and they're wearing their lab they're coat. They're wearing their lab coat. It's like, excuse yeah. me, no. Yeah. The idea of the lab coat is it is a barrier in the lab. Right, right. Bringing it outside yeah, kind that, of defeats. Yeah, not help anybody, yeah. And you notice yeah. the black yeah. stain on the lapels when they're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the biggest issues that food service places run into? Hot water, hand washing. Hot water, hand, hand washing. Um, Serving food at not proper temperatures. Proper temperatures. I was going to say that. Uh, uh, the, the proper temperatures is, is something that we like to drill home to them yeah. all the time. And we always have our thermometers with us. So you walk in and spike a steak? We have to. Yep. You have to. Right. That's, that's uh, a new regulation. You know, especially while they're cooking it, too. Yeah. Not only after that, but while they're cooking it. So, you know, you take... Um, Something like a hamburger, you know, should be at least 165 Six, degrees okay. as, as, as it's being cooked, you know, uh, to make sure, at least for 15 seconds. Yeah. So we, we're there to wash to make sure that that's part of their practice. So if they pull it off and it's 140. Yeah, get, you know, either put it back on. That's what we would tell them mostly, yeah. put it back on. Or um, throw it away. But, you know, usually just put it, put it back on the grill. And bring in the temp, the product down cool and quick rather than sometimes you leave it on the counter because it's too hot to put in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. That's a fallacy. You got to get it in there, cool it down. Right. In a small pan, slack right. it. And there's a certain way to yeah. do that too. So I mean, these are things that that they would learn in a, in the in the food sanitation courses, and, and hopefully, they did learn it. So you know, we even have the right as inspectors, as we go in there, we're not only looking on the wall to see if Al Korea is there, because his name is on the on the ball on, on the wall as being one of the a decertified person. And we is he here? Yes, he's right in the back. So we can ask, you know. So what, you know, what are the call symptoms? them out here? You know, yes. al, you know, you know, what, what are the symptoms of salmonella? Uh, what would be the problem if you didn't cook that hamburger to the proper temperature? So and we hope they're going to give us the right answer back. On the uh, serve safe, it's supposed to be one person per shift, and sometimes you go in there and it'd be, at, let's say, at seven o'clock at night. Uh, was it one person? Well, we, guy, he's certified. He works daytime, not nighttime. Oh, no, it's going to be any shift. And it's going to be every right. shift. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. That, well, like I said, it's something. It's, it's, not, it's not the typical inspections that we were all used to back uh, 10, 15 years ago. Not even You know, that where you're looking at the place for un, un, uncleanliness, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because like the old saying says, a clean restaurant doesn't make, necessarily make it a safe restaurant. You know, well, sure, the things you said. Mm -hmm. I could have a very clean restaurant if my fridge is mm -hmm. at 10 degrees, not 4 mm -hmm. Celsius. Right. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to get bacterial growth. Sure. And if I don't cook it to 165 degrees, mm -hmm. I'm not eliminating that issue. Right. Yeah, right. but I cooked right. it like that last week, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm just reheating it again. Mm. Yeah, it's been there for three days. Yeah. Oh, God. So now, 
we're running into the leaf season, and we all yeah. think of Scotty and his leaf suckers, but you guys deal with it all year, don't you? All year you? round, yes. We yeah. even do it because of the convenience of the, of the uh, Hope, uh, Milford citizens. Uh, they can bring them down there all year round, their grass clippings, their yard waste, anything they have. And the leaves accumulate, especially in the fall. And then the cost to get rid of it is pretty high. And we also get rid of, take brush, and we get rid of that. We have a, some a company come in, and they shred it all of, and throw it into a blower. It's wood well, that's chips. That's convenient, because I think one of the problems you always have is when you're clearing out your natural area, yeah. mm -hmm. you don't want, Scotty doesn't want the brush right. in the middle right. of the leaves, because right. then the leaf suckers get all clogged up. Right. Yeah. And the brush, it probably costs us, depending on the, Quantity we've taken in between three and four thousand dollars every time we get rid of it. Mm. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the leaves and grass this time are a big problem because the companies we used to use say they can't do it anymore. And they don't need them. They, they don't need yeah. them. They're all filled up. And uh, mm. so we're having a problem now, right at this point, trying to get rid of the grass and Can leaves. Can you wait till nighttime, take them up to Asylum Street, and donate <laughs> them to Scotty? <laughs> that, that would be nice. Al, could you give us your address? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to work uh, something out, and I think Scotty is probably going to be a part of it. Well, mm. I mean, he's always mm. talked about how he takes, because he takes a lot of yeah, leaves takes oh, sure. the in a real short period right. of time, mm -hmm. yeah. and how he has to go up there. We never think about it. You dump him there, and he makes compost out mm -hmm. of it. Mm. But he said it's not just leave him there. It'll take forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, has he has to turn them, turn sort of aerate it. Right. And yeah. Even yeah. We even put like water on them too yeah, sometimes yeah, to yeah. get that uh, process going. So yeah, it, it is. It's all it's all science, but um, like I said, right now we're in a, pr uh, a predicament where we do have a full uh, area of grass and leaves. We're just trying to find a way to bring that down a bit. Well, we just bought the cemetery a new dumper truck. You know, maybe you can ask mm. them. Hey guys, when the you're not using the dump truck, can you come pick up some, pick leaves, up some leaves and leaves. give them to Scotty? Well, let's yeah. put them in the dump truck and let them ride around town fast, and the yeah. leaves will blow out. Mm. <laughs> and then Scotty can pick them up with the new leaf blowers. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Take it to Asylum Street. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think that's the model of efficiency we were hoping. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, in general, we had vaccination day? Mm -hmm. Yes, we had four of them. We had four flu clinics so far, starting in September, I think it was eight, 17th or 18th, well, when we had the um, Senior Expo. And that was probably one of the first uh, ones. Uh, uh, around. Around, right. A lot of municipalities used to actually call me up. Frank, Franklin, Bellingham, Medway, uh, Medfield actually called me to say, you know, how did you get the, vac how did you get the, the, the vaccinations? You know, because they didn't get them yet. You know, again, in, 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 as you know, too, um, one of the best defenses against the uh, flu, of course, is the uh, vaccination. But it's also getting it early. Yeah. You know, getting it early before there's a lot of the... Um, 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 flu, the, the influenza are out there, you know, so uh, we try to get it as early, and having it in September is very early, yeah. because the, uh, usually the uh, season is October, sometimes through May, you know, so again, if to have it the second week of September, I thought was incredible, and we had like 230 people to, to actually get their vaccinations that, with that one uh, clinic. So far, out of the four, what the four we had, uh, we've done well over 450. Now, why would people go to the Board of Health Vaccination Day versus the local pharmacy? If they don't have insurance, I was a free. I was a free. I mean, that's, yeah. at the end of the day, I mm -hmm. walked into Rite Aid. Mm -hmm. yep. I sit down, they harpoon me. The $27. And 30 bucks $30 or whatever it is. Later, yeah. $27 mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. after I've been harpooned, I leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they charge you. Most of them will charge your insurance company. You have my part of it. Yeah. Yes. You know, they're charging my insurance company something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I still had to put out money out of my really? pocket. Really? Sure, yeah. yeah was, and, you know, mm -hmm. for some of these people, 27 bucks, mm -hmm. $30 yeah. in some cases. Right. Yeah. And they won't get them. Yeah. I mean, we, we just them. had this monumental debate 2.0 or 2.8 to the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that gives $64 relief. Mm. You know, we talk about 200 some, but at the end of the day, mm. the 60. difference between 2.0 million to the tax rate and 2.8 was 64 bucks, mm -hmm. which a lot of money to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, right here, if you're gonna get mm -hmm. a flu shot, you can save half of that. Right. Yeah. You save 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And who pays for that? Well, the State Department of Health, the federal government, okay. I would say does, because they, they, they get it from the, from the federal, when I say they, 
the Mass Department of Public Health gets it from CDC. But Milford taxpayers aren't footing that bill. No, no. they are not. They are no. not. The, the only no. money that <coughs> taxpayers shall hold is our contract with the VNA. With the VNA. But that it's, comes it, out but of it's included. You know, I mean, yeah, that's just to administer it. The yeah. VNA yeah. has always been amazed when you think of everything they do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the money they charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, it's not free. No, no. But, it's yeah. but, but it's incredibly good. You know, you know I mean, yeah. I can't imagine mm -hmm. you can rival the service. Mm -mm. And the dedicated mm -hmm. employees they have are unbelievable. And that brings up another point. We now have a Board of Health nurse through the VNA that's at the senior center twice a week. That's another program. See, all these, since the last time we've met with you, um, you know, to, from the shred day to the... Um, we haven't um, talked about that yet. Oh, but okay. Yeah, right. Uh, but, you know, there, there's certain things that we've done, you know, that are new programs. And, and like Kenny was, was mentioning, um, uh, in fact, I think you were very instrumental in getting that so going. With tell me about block. the two-day VNA yeah. days. Well, they're, they're uh, two mornings a week. I think the mornings are Tuesday and Wednesday. The, there's a nurse there. And uh, if there's anything the seniors need, they just go in and talk to her. If they, they need uh, advice on their medication or if they need... Uh, so you go down to the senior center. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. it costs you... Nothing. Nothing. It costs... The, you nothing. The town. No, but I'm just the saying. Board of Health I, is If paying. I am a senior, yeah. right, and I want to talk to a nurse, she's right yeah. there for you. Right there. Uh, to, to Two days a week, I can go in there, yep. and mm -hmm. the town of Milford has paid, right, right, so that I can go in there for free. Yeah. 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 Says, Listen, spent, I'm taking this correct. medication. Yeah. 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 I've been getting dizzy spells. What do you think? She'll help you out. Uh, she'll spend as much time as with you. Yep. Uh, I. Um, uh, every time I wake when up, when I make a copay, I can't get a nurse to spend yeah, as much no, time. And this is this is this is a, 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 a at least a BSN, you know, uh, with years of experience, especially in, in with the senior with the senior citizens. Yeah. And like I said, that's a that's a, a, se a segment of our population that we don't want to forget. True. You know, so uh, you know, and like I said, from like you said, medication. To I wake up in the morning, I get a little palpitation on my heart. Uh, can you check my blood pressure? Well, the, the wonderful thing I like about the VNA being there is they're qualified to know what they can answer mm -hmm. and yes. what they can't. What they right. can't. Exactly. Right. So, you know, if it gets to a point where you say, you know, my finger hurts when I do this, yeah, okay, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. But right. when it gets to, wait a minute, that sounds like you ought to go to a physician. And then she'd yes. make that, make sure you yeah. go. Exactly. You know, now I mean, all of a sudden, okay, it's worth doing the $20 copay. Right. But the amazing part is, with managed health care, our primary care physicians are being forced to squeeze more and more people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. tighter windows. Right. And that's hard, you know, especially, you know, you think of the Italian, the Portuguese grandmothers. Some of them need some time mm -hmm. yep. to talk and to think. Mm -hmm. yep. What a wonderful idea that, you know, mm -hmm. your mother, my mother can go down there. You can go down there and, and get talk. You. Walk away, we, we come back an hour later. We even had questions right. asked about dentures. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. my, my dentures are hurting. You should look at the mouth. Yeah. And like I said, it's, 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 it's a fantastic service. And in most cases, uh, it's the same nurse. So they, it, become, it they get familiar with her. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable with her. And it, it's, the whole thing flows very easily. I mean, I remember the whole VNA program when my mom had her knees done. It mm -hmm. was so wonderful to have a Milford person. Mm -hmm somebody who you knew mm. came into your house and mm -hmm. they probably don't take care of people any better if they're Milford or not. Mm -hmm. But it sure felt that way. Because, sure. yeah. you know, when it's so-and-so's mother or, you know, so-and-so's yeah. sister, you automatically feel a little more comfortable. Sure you do. Yeah. Sure you do. Yeah, so that's, so that's one of the other programs that we've uh, yeah. just recently started. Now, talk to me about Shred Me Day. Shred Me Day. <laughs> Not sure we, we have a company. We have a company that comes in. Uh, we've only had it once so far because we're kind of evaluating mm -hmm. how well it went, and it did go well. Uh, so they come in once. They're there for four hours. Four hours, correct? Yeah, nine. Eight, uh, nine uh, three oh, hours. Three hours. Oh, three at nine to noon. Nine, nine, nine to noon. noon. There. And you can bring your old tax returns that you no longer have to keep that older than seven years, or have them shredded. So. Nobody can get any information, well, Social Security with information numbers. information thievery, yeah, about, that's right. what it's all about. You yeah. don't want to drop 
a tax return mm -hmm. or a W-2 or something with your, yeah. your name, your Social Security. Might as well give and your, your bank account. And your date of birth. And you yeah. And so the, uh, the company that does this, the people can watch as they, all these documents yeah, are put it into screen. the shredder. Really? They have yeah, a screen and they can see their documents being shredded. So they're so very they'll, comfortable. They'll, they'll, they know it goes right, right into they a dumpster. They see it come right out. They see it go in. They see it shredded all on screen. You know? I mean, I, I worry less. If it's yeah. sanctioned by the town, yeah. you're not going to bring a charlatan in. You're yeah. only going to pick right. somebody that you trust. Right. right. And right. we have a lot of seniors that accumulate all their old bills, all their bank accounts and statements. You pull out the drawers. You see them loaded. Here's a place for them to take it and feel comfortable that they go Please, I have a shredder. And once a year, I sit there for hours watching a movie and yeah. fill up bags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell how you wonderful! What, come just down, and we'll take care of you. Now, how do I learn? You know, you talk about hazmat day, you talk about shred day, flu day. Mm -hmm. How do I learn what days those are so I can plan? We have it on our website. We put it on Patch. We put it on WMRC, and with the cooperation of Tom Olaf, our police chief, he puts it on the two signs uh, at the. Um, Water company and at Middle East School. The patch and WMRC, those are transitory. They're mm -hmm. up, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your website, what website is that? The town, town of Milford's website. Mm -hmm. So the minute you click on, you don't have to like start clicking and get into the Board of Health website. As soon as you click on it, it'll be there on the, on the first page. So I just go to the town of Milford website. Mm -hmm. right. There it is, Board yep. of Health, mm -hmm. in it. Yep. Right. And the schedule of all the special things going on are there. Mm -hmm. Plus yeah. once a year, we send out a flyer to all the homes. Uh, about our recycling program. Mm -hmm. Some of these programs are listed on that flyer also. How is recycle going? Not bad. Recycle. Everybody has this nightmare, sorry, but this single poopy, single stream thing has got everybody. I know Kenny's a big fan. He wants it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Al, it was you know, tough. it's just the opposite. Yeah. I, that, there's <laughs> no way I'd, I'd vote to put that in. But I mean, people here that I'm going to get a bucket and a bigger bucket, and that's all I get. And a bigger bucket. And people like me think, now i got to schlep the bigger bucket down the driveway and then schlep it back up. What is single well, stream? It's not only that. It's control. Yeah, you know, you, single stream is they, they're going to pick up your trash and put it in the truck. They're going to pick up your recycles and put it in the truck. Well, supposedly this was going to save all kinds of money. But as we're finding out now, they're going to charge us extra for this. We're going to have to pay for it because it's more work. When they dump it out, somebody's got to sort these it's things. Process. All I'm out. confused. I thought, and it may be my ignorance, single stream, I had a fixed configuration bucket for recycling. Mm -hmm. 90 okay. gallon. A, a, a 90, 96 gallon bucket. 96 gallon cycle. bucket. And I had a smaller 64, 64 gallon, gallon for, for rubbish. And I had one guy who had the tongs yeah. mm -hmm. and yes. he would eat. Yeah. So I saved Correct. labor and mm -hmm. I'm automatically separating them, right? R right, right. So why aren't I saving money, Kenny? Because, because when they take it to the, uh, uh, um, re the recycling processing plant, um, they have to separate what they what you put in that bucket, glass here, tin, uh, 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 metal cans here, paper here, plastics here, plastics number one, plastics number oh, two, wait, plastics so number today three. Today I separate it because I have two, right? No. I have newspapers, mm -hmm. right, and I have the other stuff. Exactly, but. exactly. You have you have right now we separate Milford Town of Milford separates newspapers from the others, called the co the commingled, okay, um, which is great. With single stream. The newspapers will go in with the. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I thought I'd have newspaper bucket. No, 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 stuff no, 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 no. bucket. No, no. one no. bucket. Well, All you one, recycle. One bucket. Holes. Your newspaper. And what they try to say is that'll make it easier for the resident to recycle, which is fine. I understand. You don't have. In other words, the only, the only step you're cutting out is you don't have to put the paper in a paper bag. That's it. And number one, it costs more money because of the processing fees. You know, not only the time and labor it takes to, to separate and yeah, whatnot. Well, today I just have two buckets. Mm -hmm. I have one for newspapers. Right, right. I have one for stuff. Right, yeah. Right. And I put, same place at the bottom right. of my driveway, exactly. I just put the two bags right. side by side. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, I'm assuming yeah. they pick up the newspaper and throw it one part right. of the truck. They do. Right. right. And the stuff in the other. In the other, right, right. exactly. Well, at the beginning. What problem are they trying to fix? But now, at the beginning, they were trying to say it's going to save all kinds of tax dollars, but as they got into it, 
the, actually the state kind of bullied the towns into getting involved there. Remember that? Right, but that was three or four years ago. Now they realize Now processing is a, is a big deal, yeah. and for the simple reason, paper is one of the biggest commodities. Well, it's stars the heaviest, the team. too. Yeah. It's one of the biggest stars of the team. Most of your Asian countries want our paper goods for some reason, but it's being contaminated with broken glass and whatnot, so uh, now they got a, that extra step on trying to clean it up uh, is, is okay. Now the Asian com uh, uh, companies who want our, our, our paper don't want it anymore if it's contaminated with glass or particles of glass. Uh, so uh, it, it's just not worth it. I can it. see the issue with having three buckets. Because mm. I can, one behind, one ahead, I can take two buckets down the end of right. the driveway. But now if I got three, I got to make another trip. Mm -hmm. Well, you now know, it's the old adage Paul Cummins, God rest his soul, used to say, if it ain't fixed, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, it. fix it. And we have a good system here in Melford. Well, that's why I said, what are we trying, what no, was no, no, the no, goal? Okay. But, was well, it was, it was presented habits. to us by the company that picks up this, uh, the, the waste, the uh, Republic Services. And that's why we took it under advisement. I quickly determined I'm not for it. And we have yet to put it to a vote well, the with that the board. the thing that worried me is, you know, we all have Christmas coming. You know, you have mm -hmm. that special weekend where, okay, we've all kind of said, I'm putting down four bags. Let's hope they're nice to me. And okay. I got to admit, they'll take it. They've taken it. Mm -hmm. I guess as long as you don't abuse it. Mm. Right. But they seem to have a sense of humor because come Christmas, I don't just have the minimum. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always an extra yeah. bag an or extra two. Bag sure. Or two. Sure. sure. Right. But uh, if I have a fixed container, mm. you, you're going to have to pay it extra for another bag. And that's something we'll never do. Oh, this you mean the designer bags like Worcester? Yeah. yeah. This board and and any never, other, any other misplay that. around our area has that. My daughter had that. They had mm -hmm. the cute little yellow bag, mm -hmm. three bucks a bag for this little designer bag. Mm -hmm. And I thought was about it, was how it like, much. Like, like this big. About that big. Yeah. 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 We have some people that, and I can't prove this, but I know it's happening. Uh, certain people have told me that uh, they have children or no, relatives. No, their kids bring the trash to Milford because they're paying designer bags. Exactly. Yeah, they do. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and not only that, but the, the company did say that, you know, at, at first, not, not that they, their, their tunes changed too, that, you know, they'll provide us with the bins that's going to be like a, maybe a million, million and a half dollars to, to buy them and, de and de deliver them yeah. to 12,000 homes. Um, so, um, and now with that, there's also a little glitch. So let's say that company does not get the next contract. That's their bins. They take them with them. So now we're going through the process all over again. Holy what moly. Do we do? You know what I mean? What so do we do? If the, so that's another thing we right, got to think about. If the company loses a contract and the bins are all gone. Well, the other thing, though, is Who let's say the they're bins, not no. even losing it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. not that my daughter would ever hit a bin, mm -hmm. you know, because they're perfect so, drivers. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but <laughs> if your kid runs over a bin. Mm-hmm. Well, who's responsible? I believe the homeowner would then have to pay for that bin, yeah. which can be or they don't use it. Yeah, eighty eighty four yeah. fifty. Yeah. yeah. How much? Eighty four fifty. And that's only hundred dollars for a bin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because it's extra special. You know, so yeah. you know, so these are the things. That, another thing too, we're, we're so used to putting out that one bulk item, yeah. your mattress, your your box spring, your your couch, um, and that one that'll be eliminated. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, it, so that's we, a big point. So we're getting we're getting we're paying more money for less service, just so it's easier to recycle, and, um, and aesthetically the neighborhoods look a little better. Is it worth it? Well, somehow I think I can live with mm. the couple hours, I mean, let's face it, most of us work. Mm -hmm. So you put it out seven o'clock whenever you're leaving. Yeah. I know by eight something, they're mm -hmm. coming they're, by my house. Yeah. So for an hour or two of less aesthetically pleasing, mm -hmm. it sure sounds like sure I like the, the ability, the day that you have the big family parties and yes. all. And you've got to understand, too, especially as, as, as a, a multi-year mm -hmm. finance committee member, um, we're one of the only towns in the state that still have our rubbish and recycling curbside picked off, for, uh, taken it's from, part the, of the tax rate. From, from the tax base. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the town, most, all the towns surrounding towns, except for Hopedale, I think, uh, either have a bag fee, user's fee, or both. 
you know, and, and that's something that we haven't. Well, we've had that discussion. To me, that's nothing more than a tax. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Oh, sure. Anytime the town puts their hand in my pocket mm -hmm. and extracts money, mm -hmm. we can call it a fee, we can call it right. whatever you want. It's a tax. Exactly. It's, it's a, a tax. 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 Right. And, uh, you know, another uh, issue also is what if they say, well, my trash bin isn't big enough, so I'm going to put my uh, extra trash in my recycle bin. Which is 96 which, gallons. Oh, now which, you're really which is happening in Franklin. I get, it's happening in Franklin. Yeah. And right. they've hired people, I guess, to, to go and to, enforce it. To go and enforce it. So now, the, now, the, now, the now you're contaminating the recycle, right, which, which you're is, rating on recycles. Right, it goes way down. They can't even use it as recycling anymore. And now you're it's and you're hiring another person now, now it's waste. on the payroll. So now you've got to hire people to go and enforce this. And not only that, but enforcing is just not saying you better cut it out. Because if you give the person the, 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 a thumb on the nose, uh, 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 the, uh, now you've got to take them to court oh, to, to fine. So look at, look at the aggravation it's, it, it can cause. Right now we have a system that's working. Our recycling rate is stable. Is it ever going to go up really high? I don't think many are because, like we mentioned before, your heavy items are getting less and less in the waste stream, I mean, in the recycling stream. Glass is be being replaced with plastic, and people are not getting magazines and newspapers anymore because they're getting them online. So these are the things that bring down, the, we're getting the volume, but we're not getting the tonnage. Yeah, but if you're doing the best you can, mm -hmm. and the town is doing, you know, as well as it can, right? That's I don't right. know that. I mean, can't ask for anything else. World peace is a noble goal, mm -hmm. right? Right. A hundred percent recycle rate mm -hmm. is a noble a goal. Noble goal, right? But you sit there and say, practically, mm -hmm. you know, how do we compare to everybody around us? Right. Right. And that's kind of, to me, the baseline you've got mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It, it is. And like I said, we're, we're doing fine now. The price is is is, is, is stable, um, and um, like I said, we're still doing it off the tax base, which I think is. It's wonderful. It's noble. I mean, the you fact know. I can put my couch there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's off the tax right. base. The yeah. fact right. that Scotty sucks leaves off the tax. I mean, mm -hmm. all these little mm -hmm. things, when people compare themselves, saying our tax rate is the same as Milford's, mm -hmm. uh, not quite. No. Mm. You know, I don't want right. to pay that $3 right. yellow designer right. bag that my daughter. And, and, and you see that when people move out of town. Yeah, then it's and, shocked. And then they're, they're shocked. Or people moving into town are in happy shock because yeah. they yeah. can't believe the services they're getting. Yeah. Well, we thank you for everything you're doing. We're glad you're keeping Milford ahead of the curve. Yes. Thank and you. Even though you have to have a junior member yeah, with know, only 35 years. years. <laughs> Five years. <laughs> yeah. As always, right. thank you for joining us. Um, appreciate our six loyal viewers tuning in, learning what great programs are available. Again, learn by going to the Town of Milford website. Hit the Board of Health and look at all these special programs and special days and take advantage of them. Because a lot of work goes in by the board. You know, we joke about 35 years, but it sure is a nice thing to know that we've had some consistency throughout the board and that people understand. So may God bless. May tomorrow be a healthier day than mm -hmm. today. Right. Good night, all. Since I've been home, been running all my life just.